This is part two of the Amazon Padded Envelope Journals. In part one, we completed this Boho journal in the blue. In part two, we will be completing the torn book page collage covered journal and the journal that is covered with a napkin. All three were cut from one Amazon Padded Envelope. So thank you for joining me. My name is Peg. I call my channel Two Old Crows Mixed Media. I hope you'll take a moment and subscribe. And of course, the notification bell lets you know when I upload additional content. So to get started with the antique book page, this was the piece that was not exactly square or symmetrical. So we decided to stick with that. And I thought it would look very nice with some cheesecloth sticking out of either edge. So I've cut a piece of cheesecloth, set it aside. I have this antique book or this old book that I picked up at a, a thrift store and I am the pages just kind of fall apart in your hands. So the only way really to preserve them is to collage them. I could scan them as well, which I which I think I'll do. So I have some of them once I have utilized everything that's within the covers of the book. But I'm just collaging them with a glue and water mixture or a handmade, handmade Mod Podge. I'll link that in this frame at some point. And I'm covering that Amazon envelope in totality with these book pages and really giving it a good coat of the glue and water to preserve the integrity of the page. And once we get everything completely covered, I'll set this aside and allow it to dry. And there we go. Just one more little coat. And now that that has dried, we'll trim off any excess around the edges. And there. That's going to look nice. Just give it one last little cover where now, I think that to really protect this, I'm going to go back in with the Mod Podge hard coat and just give it a bit more security, if you will. So I'm going to just give it a good heavy coat of that Mod Podge hard coat. And that this just creates a, a little bit more durable book cover. So there, we'll set that aside and allow that to dry. Now I have that all completed. I want to add some color to the back of the book. I've chosen just black. I think that's Mars black. And we'll just remove anything Manila, the Amazon Smile logo. We'll just take out all presents of advertising on that package. And we'll set that aside and allow it to dry. That is now dry, so I would like to add some interest to the inside cover. Pulling out my gel press, and I will coat that with a raw umber, just a light coat of raw umber to put over this black. Pulling in a stencil, and I'll lay that stencil down and just get that definition, and print up some jelly, 
not jelly pages, some deli pages, so some deli paper. And I just want to make sure I get some good, some good coverage. You're going to pull that ghost print a little bit with a coat of the black over the, the brown. And now I'm just going to rip those into pieces and get those down on this inside cover. And my whole purpose here is I want something to peek out of that fold. So we have the book cover on the front cover and this book is not completely square. So this inside cover is going to peek out when the book is folded. I hope that makes sense. And I'm just gluing all this deli paper down with the glue and water mixture or the handmade Mod Podge. I've allowed that to dry and am trimming around the outside edges. And let's see, see how that peeks out. I'm just taking a cosmetic sponge, a little bit of black, and going around the outside edge to frame that in. And sometimes that cover separates from the bubble wrap, so I'm testing it around the outside edges and just gluing it into place wherever appropriate. This is just glitter glue. If I can ever get it unclogged or, oh, it must have been empty, so I'm going to fill that up. And there, we are good to go. And now to cut that cheesecloth down into an appropriate size, size, and we shall just tuck that on the inside so that dangles out on each front and top and bottom. And of course, you'll see it front and back. Just lay some glitter glue on the inside to get a good firm hold of that in place. I'm going to trim it up and then we will fray it. I went to fray it so it is vintagey, rustic, messy, whatever adverb you want to use to describe it. And we'll do that top and bottom. Trim and fray. I'm poking a hole in the center and using one of these uh, Tim Holtz little, I'm not exactly sure what he calls them, but they're, they're little attachments or, or little, almost like little pegs that you screw in and it gives me something to attach a closure to. Just poking a hole with my crocodile on the back and I, I will set an eyelet on the back and that Tim Holtz little th thumb screw on the front and I've taken a piece of cheesecloth and just pushed it through that eyelet and I will tie it off on the back give myself just enough to come through and attach to that little adornment or that little attachment. Now I've cut a piece of cheesecloth to put on the front cover 
and I have these feathers and I'm going to tie a couple of those together with another little piece of cheesecloth. And I have some threads that I that I want and this little piece of uh, ribbon that's black. I wanted to cut off the binding on both sides of that ribbon and fray it a bit and we'll lay that on top of the cheesecloth. We'll lay the feathers and the threads on top of that. I'm just going to hold that in place until that glue sets. And there, there is the front cover, the little feathers, the loose threads and threads I pull from, you know, anything I'm working on. If I'm fraying cheesecloth, I put that in a, in a little container. I have pulled one of the binding threads that I used on the previous through a button and tied it off. And I'm going to glue that on top of all of those threads that I have placed at the bottom of the feathers. And that didn't seem to be sticking down, so I'm going to pull that up and create, treat it as one unit and glue it down once again. So there, it, I got a firm attachment that time and now I'm measuring just to determine what size I want to cut my signature to. And I again, as I did in episode one or part one, I just used some tea stain paper, nothing special on the signature. And we will just bind that in with some wax thread. Going to cut that thread, measure it about three, a little more than three times the width of the book. Stick that thread on a needle and pull it through that hole I just punched with my pick. I'm going from the inside out, coming back through that second hole back through the middle again and then we'll come back up in that third third hole. Tie that off in a square knot. So you go in through the middle from inside to out up through the back on what the top or bottom hole come back through the middle back into the inside of the book through the third hole. Just going to thread some buttons onto the bottom here to give a little interest to the dangle that we created with the binding. Trim those off. Just making sure everything is secure and that we didn't disrupt anything with that binding. And I think that pretty much completes this little booklet. I think this is my favorite of the three. Of course, I have a tendency to like the browns. There's that book number one that we completed. And now let's work on book Number three. Again, this is a square or symmetrical piece. And we're going to make this one real simple and real easy. So let's just stamp that up with some script stamp. Take a napkin, pull off those two plies and get it down to just one ply. 
Cover this with the glue and water mixture and lay that napkin down. And cover once again with the glue and water. I'll set that aside, allow it to dry. And I'm going to come back and trim that off and I'm carefully trimming that because I am trying to finish this book only utilizing one napkin. So there's, there's our cover. Let's just make sure all of that is securely in place. Like I said before, sometimes the manila file folder type material or the outside of the envelope comes unglued from the, or that bubble wrap comes loose. Just glue that back together. And I'm gluing this shut. And now I'll take the rest of the napkin and complete the other side. I just trimmed off that gold trim. I don't want that outside trim on, on the book. So there we go. That's in place. We'll just decoupage or collage it down. I guess it would be decoupage. And I'll let that dry. I'm just folding over the outside. Instead of trimming, I decided to fold over just to keep, create a finished edge on the book. So I folded over the second side of that napkin onto the first side. Just speeding the drawing a little bit with my heat gun. Once again, be careful with that because that bubble wrap can melt. And now some burlap. And this is just a burlap ribbon and I've cut the um, outside edge or the binding of the ribbon off that holds it all together, I guess, and frayed it a bit to glue it down on the front of this book. Little cheesecloth, some threads and assorted things out of my little catch bucket here where I put all little threads and pieces left over from projects. There's a little piece of sari silk there. Another button. I'm going to thread that button with another thread remnant and tie that off. And we'll glue that on the top. I'm just trying to decide if I want anything else on there. I'm going to just fray those edges a bit more. And I think I'll take all of these little pieces that I've pulled out by fraying those edges and tie those together just in a little bundle, haystack type bundle. And we'll stick those aside that button. And there we go. So we'll go ahead and get the binding in that napkin covered one and that little thumb screw like we put on the first one to finish off that closure. Here is the completed book cover or book page journal. And this is the completed napkin. And you can see I use that same closure 
on this one as well and just tied it with some sari silk. So I hope you enjoyed. Thank you for joining me. Again, my name is Peg. I hope you'll take a moment and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate all the comments, the likes, the shares. Those do help my channel and I am very appreciative of those. And I hope you come back and join me again. Bye for now.